I learned kind of a while ago to let go of having a set format about how things going to go because you can have something there and you had it in your mind and then something else starts happening and you have to let go of these preconceptions and go with the flow of what's emerging on the canvas. If you consciously control it with your conscious, your subconscious can't deliver. So that's an important aspect of my work, to let the subconscious evolve and communicate. Judge. I was born in Minneapolis, Minnesota many moons ago. Um, I've been painting all my life. Um, six years ago I returned from lower Manhattan where I had spent 36 years painting in that area. Um, when I found out about the Schmidt Artist Loss, I moved here, made a reservation, and that was 2014. So during that time I've created a lot of new work mostly in the circular format, but I began working with smaller rectangular shapes when I first came. Well, the circular format, I first began that when I came back from a trip to Switzerland in the 90s, and I tried to paint that theme of an alpine theme in a rectangular surface and it didn't work. So then I converted to the circular format and that alpine theme worked very well. It works very well with nature because in nature there are no rectangles, it's all pretty circular. Um, so that's been a natural development of my work. I've come back into it and out of it during the course of years, but now I'm into it because of my new motivation inspired by a trip to the universe and I'm a big fan of any kind of scientific uh, program that relates to that cosmic energy. My process is uh, pouring paint, tilting, colors so they run together. Um, some of the colors are more transparent than others so one color will show through as another color. And I've worked long enough with colors to realize how that works and which transparencies do what. So it's a whole education in how to use color that I've evolved into. So, so I start with something and I say, oh, I don't know. <laughs> then I might let it dry and then put it up on the wall and see how it looks the next day. Maybe it's done, maybe it's not. Maybe I have to put it down. It's not a whole long process because it's very spontaneous and I don't sit with a brush and calculate strokes and all that. But, so I kind of got rid of my brushes. I learned kind of a while ago to let go of having a set format about how things are gonna go because you can have something there and you had it in your mind and then something else starts happening and you have to let go of these preconceptions and go with the flow of what's emerging on the canvas. If you consciously control it with your conscious, your subconscious can't deliver. So that's an important aspect of my work, to let the subconscious evolve and communicate. fourth or fifth grade they sent my things to art contests I could do portraits seventh I'll see was it seventh grade seventh eighth or ninth I won a national um, Minnesota scholastic art award state award and they sent that to New York and then it won in New York and it went to the Carnegie Institute and I knew I had the ability but I didn't take advantage of it for, I mean, I did major in art, you know, but um, again, I taught for a number of years until I really said, I gotta go to New York now. When I went with that friend of mine, found a gallery. And I had made some big sales in Dallas when I was doing some teaching, um, community college teaching in my studio in Dallas. 
and I had a, uh, she was a art, a decorator and she bought one of my big paintings and she brought one of her clients into my studio, very wealthy client. And she said, now Joe, this would be great for your husband's office. This would be great for your dining room, for your living room, for your bedroom, for your fantasy room. How much is that? So I said, um, 35,000, but I'll take five off. She said, okay, I'll put um, 5,000 down and 1,000 monthly. So that was our plan. So that enabled me to finance a trip to New York. So that's what I did. I, I think of being flexible um, with how you promote your work, you know, like, like <clears throat> when, I, when I realized, you know, if you quote a price of something, you ought, well, I can't afford to buy a painting. I, said, well, I think you could develop yourself an art budget just like you have for, you know, films or sports. Get yourself an art budget and commit to it and have something you love. Don't go to, you know, don't go to Walmart and buy a cheap piece of art to put on your wall. Get something that's original and creative and get what you like on terms you can afford. And I said, well, I, I realize that people move around a lot. Um, you know, one house might not have the wall space or a different wall space and, and they don't have to put the painting under the bed. They can take it out and get another one as long as they have their credit build up. Um, they can change out, you know, and, and they're not stuck with something. They can always change things out and agree to pay on a monthly comfortable basis. So, yeah. I, have a, I have a club of people that do that. One of them just finished off. But she built a modern new house up in, uh, oh, it's near Mystic Lake. Um, but anyway, she built a contemporary house and she filled it up with my art. It's a freedom uh, to respond to beauty. Science is one, is one reality and art is another. So it's, it's more of a, a right-brained activity. So I like, I'm more right brain, so that's part is more developed. So that's what I'm cultivating doing my painting. To respond to beauty, I love that answer. Mm -hmm. It's very profound.